Welcome to the Guitar Dads Podcast, the podcast for guitar dads by guitar dads. This week, another brick in the wall. Is Rob Halford going to break the rock law in a few weeks? And a huge interview with a killer guitarist of a great new band. Dallas White from the LA Maybe is here. He may be playing some dirty damn tricks this week on the Guitar Dads Podcast. Now, the guys who are sure to never be in the rock hall, Matt and Dave. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Matt. And I'm Dave, and welcome to the pod, everybody. Episode 84? 84. Good we always good counting, have to Dave. Ask. Hey, you it's know, good, good counting. We're definitely not my MO. We're definitely not going to be in the rock hall. I don't think we can say definitely the same not. about Dallas, though. I think he, he might he, he has a chance. I so. think he's got a chance. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll get to Dallas in a little bit uh, in a few seconds. But uh thank you to our Laura listeners each and every week. We uh we love seeing uh, your comments on Instagram, Facebook. So find us at Guitar Dads Podcast on Instagram, where we post uh clips of this podcast every single week. Come join us on our uh, private Facebook group at Guitar Dads Podcast there. As we say, no questions asked. You just come yeah. in. We'll let you in. Yeah, just come in. Yeah. A lot of cool stuff happening over there. We're having a lot of fun with people there. So uh, come check out all the all the mayhem. Anyway, so uh, Matt, we got anything else before we introduce uh, our guest no, for the no, evening? No, no, no. Let's bring them in. <clears throat> all right. So we have talked about this band, guys, uh, a, a little while ago, and we uh, were able to snag an interview with the lead guitarist. So uh, the L.A. Maybe hail from North Carolina, uh, Charlotte, I believe, right? Um, and with them, they bring a new twist to the classic sounds uh, like GNR, ACDC, and that kind of era of music. Um, they released their debut uh, album, Dirty Damn Tricks, in March of 2021. And since then, have taken the music world by storm. Tonight, we are thrilled to be joined by the band's lead guitarist and lyricist, Dallas Dwight. We'll talk music, gear, and so much more. And by the end of this, we're pretty sure you're going to be really big fans of this band. So, uh, hey, Dallas, thanks for joining us, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Happy to be here, boys. If by the end of this, I walk out still not being a dad, it will have been a good podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, leave the, I'll do the guitar. I'll leave the dad part to you. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, leave, we'll take the, the dad, dad part. Leave yeah. the dad to us, all right? Yeah. Leave, leave the dad to us. That's for, better for just the future generation, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least at least for <laughs> well, now. We, I mean, you we got, feel you the got same got way about our own children. You've got, you got a lot of work to do with this band. So, you know, yeah. you, 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 you take your time on that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway yeah well you, you keep creating on. really good music and we'll keep creating like really mediocre content <laughs> how's that that's right we'll, we'll, just, I, I thought you were gonna we'll say each really stay in our lanes kids. Really, really, <laughs> really mediocre kids oh well that happens yeah. too you know I thought that's, that, I thought yeah. that's what you were gonna say and then you said content i was like oh okay that's oh yeah <laughs> well you know hey you know <laughs> anyway so uh yeah thanks man we appreciate you joining us tonight we're gonna get into a ton of stuff but um uh, as our listeners are familiar with we always love to start with our news and notes segment as we were talking about before we started recording uh we definitely want to hear your thoughts on on some of this stuff so let's just get into it um so matt you want to bring up the uh the, the biggest news that yeah. hit this week yeah yeah so so the big news to hit the guitar world this week is that tom delong has rejoined reunited with blink 182 so this is a huge i mean for blink 182 fans this has been like the biggest this is like the biggest thing that's going to happen they've been talking about this forever apparently yep. and everybody's like super excited about it I, I don't know what what people are more excited about this or when john frusciante came back to the to the chilies <laughs> but people are pretty excited about this but i didn't like i don't i don't watch or f follow blink all that much but apparently they had like another like they were going out and playing with another guitarist right yeah <laughs> like another guitarist and s singer i think or was the other dude that's, singing? yeah that's that's weird i don't what know what did about you that, think that what do you think dallas what's uh what's the deal with this big tour i hear about um it's called when we were young is that a real thing because that went viral a while back and it's like all the bands like blink 182 but if that yes. tour or if that tour or festival or whatever it is actually ends up happening, I feel like this is kind of a calculated effort. They're absolutely going to be the headliner. 
Oh okay. yeah, no, yeah, yeah I think totally. that's great. So, I think that's a great point. Absolutely. Who, who else? So this was like a—is this a definitely a thing that's happening? Who else on this bill? Uh, now that I'm saying it, it probably could have just been like a viral kind of hoax. Like, wouldn't this be cool if kind of thing? And somebody photoshopped a poster. No, uh, no, you're right. Like, I just I just googled it when you were saying it. It's actually yeah. happening. Okay, so really? 2023. Yep. 20, oh, it's happening. No, no, okay. it's happening. 2023. Okay. When we Blink's were gonna, young. I'm yep. calling it out. Blink's gonna headline that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you're right. you're right. A festival like that, yeah. They're yeah, cal- they're, that? that's a that's a calculated move. They also came out and saw uh said what new album and world tour. Yes, yes that's yeah, right. Yep. No, you know what? You're you Hold are sure. you are you are absolutely right. And it's gonna be Blink that's gonna headline it and Green Day that was just announced wow. this week. So um where is this thing? It's um uh, Vegas. Oh, sweet. When we were young, that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be something that a lot of people fly in for. And stuff. Oh that's yeah. Gonna, that's going to be a that's big gonna deal. sell out instantly if it hadn't yeah. already. You got, um, you got good Charlotte on the bill. Yeah. We yellow King, card. We, yep. Yeah. Some 41 who I oh, saw some 41 back in the day. <clears throat> I saw them and they, and, and it's, great. it's really aptly named because it, it really was when I saw the lineup, I was like, yeah, that's all the bands from when I was young. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah that's great. So it's like a nostalgia tour. If ever there was one, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the, you know, great white tour of, of my generation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Geez. Let's hope it goes a little bit better, but yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. No, no. Yeah. This, this, this actually does look, it looks pretty cool. Um, simple plan. Uh, Pierce the veil. Yeah. Thirty seconds to Mars. Plain white tees. Plain oh, white tees. No, yeah. Geez. This is totally. What's the name of it again? When we, when were, we young? were young. Yeah. That's totally. When we yeah, were that's young. It. So yeah, it's blinking Green Day are going to headline yep. it. Yep. Simple Plan is an interesting one because I somehow remembered their name and I was like, oh, what was their song? And I looked it up. This is probably a couple weeks ago. And I started listening and I forgot how many hits they had. They had probably five or six like big oh, yeah. hits. Oh yeah. And then um, I yep. saw they had a new song coming out. Like it was, it had just come out like within the past uh, this year, I think. And oh, I really? To it, I listened to it and right off the bat, it's simple plan. Like they have not missed a beat. They sound incredible. Um, their singer, I, he's got to be in his forties now. He still sounds the same as when he, when he started, man. And the song's great. It, it features uh, Derek Wibley from some 41 on it as oh, well. Oh, really? Oh, cool. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah. Look at, yeah so the, simple, the new simple plan album. Yeah. Don't, don't skimp on that. It's, it's super fun. They're just such a fun band. Everything they do is so like, they uh, really are cool. Upbeat, I mean, a lot of these bands energetic. are so much yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you were saying before we before we started recording, you're 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 a real big fan of this kind of music, right? Yeah, I love pop punk. You you might not think it, but yeah, I love um. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have guessed that from your playing, but <laughs> that's I'm, that's uh, the way musicians are, right? You never know, you know. Yeah, man, I I listen to um. You'll meet people that are like, oh, I'll listen to everything. I legitimately listen to everything. <laughs> <laughs> right? I can go through just about that's every awesome. genre and give you a top three. So, uh, but yeah, and another funny thing is in our in our van when we're touring, um the absolute last thing you'll hear is just like regular rock music. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Really? Is that right? Is you'll that hear, right? you'll hear everything from jazz to country to, I don't know, metal to, um, Americana folk, you know, acoustic. Okay. Anything. Yeah. We're just so always it. listening to, to stuff, you know, is that on purpose or because you guys don't want to just listen to rock? Cause you're playing rock. You're playing your asses off every night or it's, is it's, it like, it ends up, it ends up kind of being like, so we're all musicians, musicians, like we're all music instructors and, Okay. Uh, you know, the okay. bass player yeah. graduated from Berkeley, so like when when somebody's oh. not your typical like uh, rock guy, you know, like when somebody says let's play a C sharp major seven, like we're on it. You know what I mean? You yeah, know, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I that that makes a lot of sense. I can tell that from from what yeah. you guys are putting out. That makes so, a lot of sense. And we're yeah. and we're all kind of on that same wavelength. So the stuff that we naturally listen to happens to kind of just be all over the place based okay. on. You know, listen, and we're all producers as well. So I'll listen to the snare tone on this song, and like we're just listening to the song just for the snare. You know, like oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, it's, uh, oh, yeah man. Um, well, you, you know what's interesting? All over the place. No, yeah. Well, you know what's interesting is like I always th- this is always kind of an issue for me, where that I find myself like I don't listen to a ton of music all the time. You know, like you know we're doing dad stuff. We're out in the yard. We're doing stuff. I'm listening to podcasts a lot of the time because like. When you're trying yeah. to concentrate on something else, like you get too concentrated on what's going on in the music, right? Because you're like, oh, like what what chord is that? What tone? Like what amp is he using on that? And you just it's get all true, distracted. You just you just get yeah. so, you, but you start to dissect it, and then yeah. you can, and then you almost like, you know, like we will we'll try to talk to our wives about this, so they have no idea, and like they're like, what, what are you what are you what are you talking about? Like I don't know, I'm just like it's we listen to music a little bit differently, I think when you're 
when you have when you play it all or you're any any bit of a musician i think you kind of you you consume the music a little bit differently than than somebody who doesn't you know yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. um and and to your point about podcasts it would it would shock people i think how <laughs> how little music i listen to is that right yeah interesting i yeah. listen i listen to out of all the audio that goes into my ears i would say less than five percent of its music these days oh, wow, wow. Is it, when so it mostly, is music, are you like a big podcast yeah. guy or yeah it's podcast 95 podcast oh wow yeah. i mean there's so Constantly. many po- it's so hard to let go of the podcast there's so many podcasts right like, I, have David- so, I have so many people i enjoy listening to and they come out yeah. with stuff every week so every week yeah. i have eight to ten hours of content i gotta get yeah, through you know yeah actually like, probably more than that well the way that we found you guys is that we do still like to go and li- even though we do listen to a ton of podcasts we do like to go out there and still listen to stuff and find the new that's, bands that's but how is- i listen to music i listen very do? Yeah. i listen like oh here's a here's a band i like's new album let me listen to tracks yeah. one through ten consecutively and then to make up my mind or <laughs> make it hey, mind, here's right. uh yeah here's you know a new band that we just played with let me check out their album let me uh you know here's a new band that i really enjoy let me listen to their stuff but it's oh, never sorry. like or at least it's very rarely like let's just put on a song or it's me listening to our own stuff not what we've released but what we're going to release yeah you know, sure thinking, molding in my mind you know thinking coming up with solos you know anything as i'm driving around kind of totally yeah we'll, we'll mock yeah. up instrumentals and i'll drive around and sing in my car and that's how i come up with a lot of uh, the melodies and lyrics and stuff it is so, funny isn't it like when you really just want to chill out and relax you're probably not turning on music right yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm usually <laughs> playing PS5 with a podcast going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, like that I think that's how that's how the, that's how we roll I think as musicians. It's kind of interesting. Definitely a huge it's a yeah. huge shift and and I I love it. I like getting information that way. I feel like I don't get as much information from music as I do. Yeah, no, I think that's Oh, no, that's point. totally true. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. a really good point. So for me and also music is such a part of my core like you know, career day to day that's it's like I don't always want to just listen to music. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like you need a break. Like if you do want to yeah. unwind, it's like, wait a minute, you know, this is this. So is for so me, hard. it's you know, it's 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 comedy and it's you know, podcasts and spoken word that kind of stuff. Cool, man. Great. So did you grow? I mean, did you grow up playing music at a younger age, or when did you start? I started guitar at twelve. Oh wow! Wow. Okay. So I guess, and I teach students that are like six, so I realized oh, I maybe <laughs> started a little late. I have another student that didn't start until he was like forty or fifty. So, oh wow! It's like. It's all over the place, but I started 12. So did Driz, our other guitar player. We started at the same yep. time. Um, yep. for me, I didn't know much about music. I didn't know anything about music before I started playing, but I uh, liked maybe like rap or something, whatever a sixth grader likes. I don't know what it was like Snoop Dogg and like that kind of stuff at the time. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And just whatever was like on the radio, you know, and then we went on a family vacation with another family that were good friends of ours. And the, they had a son that was my age. So he was my friend and he had an older sister. And she um, had, I guess, Guns N' Roses Greatest Hits or Appetite or something like that. And she, we're just sitting in the back of the car and she says, here, listen to this. And she puts the, you know, she had the Walkman, puts the headphones on my ears and plays Welcome to the Jungle. And I hear the intro and I'm like, I don't, I don't know about this intro. Now looking back, it's hilarious because it's such a hype, you know, it gets you going so much. But oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't sure. I was like, I don't know about this. And then the riff dropped. And and my oh, life, is- yeah, <laughs> that just changes your, your life, life right there. Forever, yeah. huh? That's that's literally why I'm here right now. Is that riff? Wow, that's, that's amazing, man. Because I, you know, it's great that you say that. Because I would probably say that's one of my top songs. You know, like if I had to rank songs, I would put Jungle at one of the top ones. You know, Guns and Roses is is yeah. will, will forever be my number one favorite band, and Paradise City will always be my number one favorite song. But um, that being said, I don't ever really listen to them. Like we were saying, you know, but. Uh, and, and we play, you know, we do a lot of cover shows and stuff and we play Sweet Child of Mine and Welcome to the Jungle and Paradise City. And we play those songs so much that um, they and somehow they still haven't lost all their luster. You know, like I've been playing Sweet Child of Mine pretty much note for note since like eighth grade. <laughs> That's <laughs> and, awesome. <laughs> and I remember playing it at like an eighth grade. Like we basically conned the school into having a battle of the bands that we were like put on ourselves with me and some friends. And um, we just did it so we could play guitar. All we wanted to do was bring our guitars to school. We didn't yeah. care how we so that's we all, like, that's all you it's science because sound waves whatever just let us play <laughs> that's right yeah yeah just anything we could say to get guitars in school and uh they that's let us awesome. do about all the bands and like yeah we we were kind of kind of pretty heavy into that and guns and roses was it at the time and and then it uh, just kind of went from there and then it was paul gilbert after slash oh, okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so paul slash and paul awesome. gilbert are probably my two you know if i had I mean, to you... whittle my playing down into two two guys that would kind of be what my style comes from i'd say those two guys 
and it certainly comes through to, and through the music because you can you definitely hear the influence you know the slash influence uh you know angus i'm sure you're pretty influenced by acdc and those i love acdc too. not not as much uh the solos as much as like the riffs and the, the and riffs the, yeah, yeah 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 yep. the yep. lyrics and the vocal melodies and the style of writing oh, and stuff yep. much more so than the solos and i love angus young he's got some really good solos as well but i i very i don't know many of them really i mean just the ones we play so, but I never really dove into that. Like I did with Slash, it was like, let me sit down and learn every solo he has, note for note. Did you, know, you really? Like, oh, yeah. like, and just regurgitate it, and then you won't know the difference, you know. Awesome. And um, there aren't that many guitar players I've done that with. So, well, Matt's a huge Slash fan, so I'm just, as our listeners know, they they know that Matt's like a massive Slash fan. I'm just gonna sit back and let you guys just like have it yeah, have it out talk here. Talk a while. So this so, is fun yeah, to listen I, to. I see so, uh, <laughs> we knew Guns N' Roses poster in the back. You too. see the G and I. There's another one over here that Dave actually gave me. I have. And you see I have the Jubilee. Fun. Yeah, you see oh, the yeah. Jubilee, which is some, the ode uh, to Slash. <laughs> I have tons of uh, Guns N' Roses stuff I could share with you. I have oh, yeah. uh, the, the amp that recorded everything you've heard on Dirty Damn Tricks is the Slash AFD 100. Oh, it is. Oh, is that right? Oh, yep. incredible! And at least, at least from my side, Driz is on is on his own level doing other okay. stuff. Okay, but yeah, oh, um, that's great. Mine's always so, been the AFD 100 for everything, and what we did is we captured it into our quad cortexes, and that's what we use live. So it's essentially oh, interesting. Okay, so you guys yeah. are running quad quad cortexes live. Yeah, dude, you won't, Amazing. You won't us, yeah, you won't catch us hauling rigs and shit. Not well, no, not no. an a, well, especially <laughs> not an AFD 100. Those things are worth big, yeah. big bucks these days. Oh my oh, yeah. goodness. Oh yeah. Th those are yeah. worth big bucks these days. So yeah, I don't, they don't, yet. uh, Slash's stuff never loses value. It seems because he only runs it or I don't know. It's not his call. I'm sure, but whoever runs it, they run it for such a limited time. It's true. So yeah, it's it, true. He'll have a new signature thing, you know, every year. And then the one from last year is now like, okay, there's only a hundred of those, I guess. Like, you know, like <laughs> so now have you, um, just last week on this podcast, we had uh, Brando, who has the appetite for distortion podcast. Yeah, I love Brando. I've been on. Do you his know show Brando? For... Okay, great. I was gonna. I was wondering. Yeah, I mean Brando is awesome, and that podcast. We actually just recently discovered the podcast because when the when the use your illusion thing came out, super deluxe. Yeah. We, 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 yeah. By the way, what in the hell is up with that? You could be mine, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You could tell you could tell it was Gilby because he had no idea when to start the song. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like what's going on. It was literally on? like a, like four 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 beats off the entire oh, I, intro. Yeah, I mean, and I, I'll tell you, like I love Slash. I love him. You know, you listen back to some of that older stuff, and you're like, you can tell Slash was on the the the, the sauce or whatever he was on. Yeah. And it, I mean, you listen to him now, and he, he's I would argue argue he's a much cleaner player now. Um, yeah. I mean, but you can't deny how great. Even the live stuff back then, there was this like edge to it that was incredible. Yeah, it was but that's what put that's what put the edge to a yeah. lot of rock and roll back in the day. Yeah, it still yeah. does, you know. And for, yeah. for for better or worse, you know. I mean, what are they? What's the you know what what do people say? Like some of the best rock songs were were written by people that don't even remember writing them. You know, I mean, yeah. And it's it, it, it's kind of it's fortunately and unfortunately true. We're gonna I try mean, to write yeah. good stuff and get out of it with our livers intact. So yeah, I'll, man, I'll, yeah, I think yeah. that's smart, Dallas. That's I feel like those smart. Are I feel like those days are over, right? Like the yeah. days of like crazy rock and roll excess. I mean, I think it happens in pockets still, but. Um, well, the, you know who that, yeah. you know who they say is the, the biggest uh, party crowd is the country fan is, is the country crowd. Oh like yeah. They say, yeah. I see that. Sure. <laughs> I, I've, I've heard <laughs> several interviews from uh, players, techs, um, you know, other, other crew members that talk about like the, the country, the country scene is like the party scene. That's, what, though, that's that's like almost taken over rock and roll, like you know, pure rock yeah. and roll from back in the day. So here's my uh, here's my Guns N' Roses kind of a couple stories in one. I'll I'll tell for you here, Matt. Oh so, yeah, yeah, drop them. Yeah. Um, I was uh, doing some production work. You know, mo I moved up here to the Charlotte area. I'm from Columbia, South Carolina originally. Okay. And one of my clients I'm working with, he's like, hey, I got a, I got a friend. You got to meet him. He's Duff's brother. His, his name's Bruce McKagan. Like, let me let me show you. He lives right here in Fort Mill. So met with Bruce, ended up linking up with him and doing a ton of work with him. Oh, and he cool. kept telling oh, me wow. like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get Duff out here and we're going to do a big charity event. It's going to be really cool. So I was like, okay, didn't think much of it. Um, well, two years later, he calls me up. He's like, all right, it's time. Duff's coming. Here's the date. <laughs> Let's go. I want you to be the guitar player. So oh, great. Oh, wow. Doing this, ended up doing this big charity event with um, Duff McKagan, uh, Gary Green from Hootie and the Blowfish, Tommy DiCarlo from Boston, um, Oh, Parthenon wow. Huxley, who's who's affiliated with ELO and stuff, and so it was all them, and then me playing guitar and a couple other people, and that was super wow. fun. So I got to just hang out with Duff for a whole day and just shoot the shit. There's a funny. We're down in the green room, and I'm playing like Bruno Mars legs on guitar, and he's sitting sitting on the couch next to me, and he's leaning over like, show, show me what you're doing. What are you doing right there? Like, and I'm literally literally sitting <laughs> teaching Duff guitar licks. 
That's and, incredible. That's awesome. Know, somebody, um, one of my friends that was there just happened to catch this moment on, I'll have to email it to you or something. There's a picture. Oh, you should, yeah. Perfectly yeah, seen, I want to see this. Like, angled and Doug's face looking at my hand like, what? No. <laughs> what, is, what is he doing? Do you think he does right that? Before, with... Right before he dropped his uh, Americana album. because he Oh, showed really? Me a oh, okay. Right before it came out. That's incredible. So do you, you think cool. he does that with Slash? Hey, Slash, show me what you got. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, I honestly don't think they talk so much. Like I like not in a negative way. I just think they don't. I don't think I get the vibe that they don't really talk a ton. Like it's I've heard that about Flash a lot, and he doesn't really have a lot to say. Like, yeah, like they they're they're in their yeah. own like dressing rooms, just doing their yeah. thing before the yeah, show. I mean, like, like, what are you going to say after all those years? It's like you've done everything. Like, yeah, that's right. Like, you've done. You've said everything. Yeah. You go out there and you go to work and you get it done. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, that's chest. that's a great story yeah. though. So D I always yeah. hear that Duff is such a cool guy and he's a very gracious guy and. Really uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's weirdest cool thing was walking in and, and into the room and just seeing him at, like on the stage, uh, just talking to Bruce, you know, going through the day and stuff. And I just walk in, I'm like, there's fucking Duff. Like, that's cool. So you, you know, like, so you I'm, were I'm like, play with Duff McKay. So you played with Duff. Like, Duff, you're, 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 yeah, yeah. you're playing. Was, you look was, over. There's Duff on bass. Yeah. Bass. There's a video and stuff where he's, um, we're doing knocking on heaven's door and I'm doing all the solos and stuff. And he, uh, it goes to the part where the solo is supposed to be over because I'm playing it like the studio, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm holding the note and Duff just kind of looks at me and goes, come on, Dallas. And I just <laughs> go off on other shit. Did you do the live in Tokyo version? <laughs> um, we do that. We do that kind of when we play it. Okay. Go, okay. And, All right. um, and then my favorite part is when he says, give me some reggae. We said, fuck that. We, we say, give me some rock and roll. And we just Chuck Berry shred as fast as we oh, can. Oh, that's right? great. Oh, cool. <laughs> I love nice. that. Give, me, give me some reggae. And I remember yeah, the yeah. Give, give me some reggae. That was, that, was, that was terrible. We don't do that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Well, that's a great, that's a great GNR yeah. story. I had the, uh, and seeing the thing on your wall reminded me I had um, Duff's uh, Platinum Appetite for Destruction record on my wall for a long time. Oh, did you? Oh, very cool. Wow, that's he incredible. It, uh, when he got it, he gave it to his mom. Um, and then their mom died and Bruce found it just in the garage. Wow. So he, Bruce had it and he lent it to me for a few years. Oh, that was nice. Oh, wow. Oh, that's incredible. Wow. That's Pretty really cool. cool. The grace that that's this another poster. Great story. This Jeez. poster is the poster from the show. It's not like the ones that they were doing because I wasn't right. smart enough to buy like the ones they were doing at the show. But I've, I got this after the fact is the show when I saw him, it was probably like one of the first uh, shows they did on the not in your lifetime tour in 2016. Um, yeah. I, I saw I remember, him yeah. in August 2017. Oh, did you? Okay, yeah. Because it was like it was like I think it was only like a handful of shows in, and they came to 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 Gillette Stadium where the Patriots play, and they played. Mm -hmm. I was able to get a ticket, and it was and Dave didn't even like go with me. He's like, I yeah, was a complete I I yeah. was a complete idiot because I yeah, remember yeah, saying yeah. to Matt like ah uh, like it's not going to be that good. This thing isn't going to last that long. They're gonna they I don't even think they're going to finish the tour. They're going to get you know yeah, all crazy. the old crap yeah. is going to come and. I mean, man, was I wrong, right? I mean, seven years yeah. later. Yeah. 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 It's insane that, yeah, it's like, how does that even happen? <laughs> Who, what what happened? Was the first, so the very first show they played on that tour, was it the Troubadour or was it the Whiskey? Oh, uh, it, was the, it was the, I think it was the Troubadour. Oh God. That's a really good. I don't, that, I, that's a good was, question. Because we're playing the Whiskey, those. which. Uh, I saw that you're playing the Whiskey. That That's incredible, man. Yeah. In just a couple of weeks. And it's actually our next show. Uh, as of right now, we have a couple of weeks off. So let's and, talk uh, about that because the, you guys yeah, got a lot of exciting stuff coming up. You're going to go and play this. And the reason you're playing over there in LA is because you're going to go on the cruise, right? You guys yeah, are playing Kiss. on yeah, the Kiss cruise. The Kiss so, cruise yep. so that's incredible. So like talk a little bit about like, are you, have you guys done a cruise? Uh, we were actually or? supposed to do one earlier in the year, but got pulled off of that one for, for one reason or another, but okay. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter now because we're doing the Kiss cruise. That's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, we'll, Can you uh, say, are you able to say which cruise it was? Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't like a big cruise. It was, it was like a, a big cruise. Like a, oh, okay. It's on like a carnival cruise or something. But that's incredible. You guys. Yeah. So how did this come about for you guys cruise. to get the opportunity to play on the kiss cruise? Uh, we just submitted to their, their sound check competition. They said, send a live video. So I sent a live video and from us in the UK and a little bit of bio or whatever. And then, um, just kind of forgot about it. And then we, we come to, we get an email saying like, Hey, you know, you're in the top 15. So they just, whoever, I don't know who. Uh, just selected the top 15 out of however many applicants this is definitely a few hundred because it was worldwide uh, oh, probably yeah. more than that and, that's um, awesome man so we made the top 15 and then they opened it up to fans to vote for the um top 10 and our fans just just went ham on that shit oh, like, that's great oh that's <laughs> great i would i would i would it, they didn't so it whittled from 15 to 10 and they never release you know who's one two three but i would be like i would put all my money that we were number one on that by a significant margin 
because our fans just went just went crazy. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. And, that's um, awesome. And we had just finished the UK and we had just gotten all these fans from Spain and the UK and all over the you know world. And, uh, and so it, it all kind of worked out really well. And then after the top 10, they close voting to the public and only the people who have a ticket on the cruise can vote. And we won that too. Oh, interesting. Oh, wow. That's so, oh, so that's, the, that's, the, inter- that's an interesting rounds. Uh, and I think the combination it. of those three rounds is probably the, the fairest way you can do it. I, I could, I couldn't come up with a, with a fairer system in my mind. Cause if you that's open it to the public then you can just spam, uh, if it's just, you know, closed then it's like, well, we have a big fan base. That'd be cool if we could, you know, use that. But I think they really did a good job of that, but, and I'm oh, saying that because awesome. I guess, but. <laughs> oh, that's right. awesome. Dallas. And we hear, so we, we haven't been on any of these cruises yet. But, you know, because it's a it's a little bit I think it's like aimed at people like a little bit older than us. I think it's too. Yeah, because <laughs> we got sure. kids at home and it's hard. I for mean, us I got I have no problem going on one of these things. It's, it's hard just for us convincing to, yeah. the wives. Yeah, it's know, hard for us to be like convince the wives. And, you know, but we're going to well, we're going to get on one of these things at one point. We're going to we're definitely going to get on it. So these this cruises is the Kiss summer Cruise summer. 11. And yep. um, I'm sure the Kiss Cruise will continue, but they've said this is the last one that they themselves will be a part of. Oh, OK. All right. So, so oh, Kiss Cruise will continue, but it just won't have Kiss, you know, performing. Right. Stuff. Kiss performing. Well, what a cool, what a great, like, I mean, for an opportunity for you guys to be on the final, like the, oh, yeah. the true, the it's, final true yeah. Kiss Cruise, right? The trippy, the trippy part is when we were sent all the posters and stuff and, and the first, the first name is Kiss, you know, in their logo. Yeah. And every other band is in the same font. So there's Black Label Society, Sebastian Bach, Richie Kotzen, Bruce Kulick, Buck Cherry, you know, all these bands in nah, the just monsters. Yeah. In the same band, in the same font, and the same size, like listed with all the others. It's kind of like, oh, that's pretty cool. That's that is amazing, man. Well, con- yeah. congratulations. That's gonna yeah, be, that's great. That's gonna be a trip. You guys are gonna have a great time. So yeah, tell man, us about this. tell us about oh, yeah. oh, sorry, I think I, Matt, I was probably just gonna ask the same question. Tell us about how the band formed yes. and, and you know how you know the, kind of the the history there and 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 where you guys have gone. We got some questions uh, sure. kind of in, in yeah, that. We, but we kind of started. We we tell people we started as a Journey tribute band, which is kind of true. That's where I met Foz and Goliath. Is that really but, true? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's where I met Foz and Goliath, and then we we kind of looked around at each other and our bass player at the time. We we're like, we should just do our own band. So we started doing that. It quickly became a, a cover band because we needed money. We had yeah. peace of mind written at the time, and that was it. And maybe parts of She's Reckless. And um, and then our bass player left, and we got Rasan. And then we had went through a couple different guitar players before we found Driz, um, who's just you know perfect match. And then that was the original five. And then when the pandemic hit, all of our gigs were canceled, and Goliath left us, so we got Alvi. And Alvi did the um, most of the songs for Dirty Damn Tricks were written at that point, but Alvi ended up doing the recording of it. And then we never really got to okay. play the shows because um covid was still kind of just flaring up every now and then and we couldn't yeah. get anything significant going so then before we couldn't get anything significant going alvi ended up leaving because he had other stuff um with his other he's in a guns and nurses tribute or something so they were uh, he was too busy to kind of balance that and i guess wasn't sure about doing the original thing so much so uh we got goliath back so we have everyone's like oh you got a new singer it's like no no, no we got our original guy back like <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, I was going to ask you about that because right. I've been kind of reading about the history and it was it's a little unclear of some of the stuff you find on the internet and you never know what you read is whether it's true or not but yeah. Um and well, then we, we kind of we never made a big announcement about Alvi leaving. Okay. Because we knew how that would go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And we and even a couple people who just heard about it like I never lie when somebody asks. Um but uh yeah, they were all oh, these guys it's over. It sucks. Uh, you guys were such a great band too bad you know it's kind of like yeah yeah first of all i wrote the songs so the songs are <laughs> the songs you right right yeah, second, yeah. Of all, they, second of all they were written for goliath so it's like of course he can sing it like awesome. you know hey, he's a killer yeah. singer he's great he's, he is good yeah. so it was mint so it's all alvi on the album though is that what you just on said the original dirty damn tricks it's all alvi on the deluxe okay. edition the original tenor unchanged and the new six is all goliath so you can it's hear all goliath, that. right okay the on the demos, deluxe edition the okay. two demo versions on the deluxe edition are the original recordings of those two songs with goliath Okay. Oh, okay. And then the All other right. ones are acoustic versions that we went back in and did and did ourselves. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Great. I mean, yeah. I mean, wow. I mean, so so, so Alvi about- yeah. has Alvi has such a great voice for that that ACDC kind of scream he does. rock, which is my all time favorite type of singing. Yeah. And Goliath can do that as well because we yeah. played a bunch of shows. But what Goliath can do that I think Alvi can't do as well is Goliath can clean up and sing like an angel, where you need that on songs like Peace of Mind and When totally. I'm Gone. Yeah, the yeah. long road, and and you can't you you don't get that as much uh, from Alvi because he was you know the ACDC guy for so long. Yeah, and, and ACDC didn't do ballads. <laughs> no, and that's and that's what's so funny when people will tell us, uh, or we heard in the very beginning, you know, oh, there's just another ACDC clone. It's like, well, 
first of all, I think that that ship sails pretty quick on the album. Like, you know, it's maybe it the first 40, first 40, 50 seconds of Mr. Danger. I'm, I'm on board with that. And then as yep. soon as it changes, it's like, eh, I don't think I've never had ACDC break into five part harmony. So, yeah, 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 yeah. No, well, no, it's, it's, it's a own thing. It's, it's, totally it's actually funny thing. you say that, Dallas, because that's exactly what happened with me when I think, Dave, you brought this band to me and I yep. turned it on. I'm like, oh, very ACDC. And then Dave's like, no, 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 no. Just keep yeah, listening. Go keep and then, listening. And then I listen to you guys for a couple of days straight, listen to the album. And I'm like, damn. I'm like, okay, this is a totally <laughs> different. And then the ballads and stuff. I mean, if you want to call them ballads, they're pretty rocking songs, but yeah. still, like, you know, the softer songs, I guess, compared to the straight ahead, you know, kick you in the ass rock and roll you guys do. Yeah. We, um, we needed to show a little range, I think. The, yeah. the other um, the analogy I always use is sometimes people kind of scoff, oh, they just sound like, you know, Guns N' Roses or ACDC or whatever. I'm, me, that's like saying, like, oh, you just play basketball like Michael Jordan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't you want to be well, yeah. compared to these people? Yeah, don't you well, want to be? <laughs> you want to achieve want a tenth that. of their success, I'll be happy. But I but I will say though, Dallas, like I think you guys do bring your own spin on it, right? So, like, and that's what yes. we love about this is you know, you find some bands that it is that classic sound, like a GNR type of a thing. But when you get, you know, I think a lot of it comes down to the songwriting. And what's going on with riffs and that kind of thing. So, you know, you can hear stuff, you know, you, there's definitely bands out there that you are a little bit too clonish. Like as a, a prime example for me, that would be a little too clonish is, is Greta Fan Fleet. Uh, they're awesome, very talented guys. Um, I like a bunch of the songs, but when you listen to it for a while, you're like, okay, like this is, this is a heavy Zep influence thing. Yep. You yeah. What, <laughs> what bugs me about that is, uh, is, is not that they sound like Zeppelin. That doesn't bug me. What bothers me is they refuse to acknowledge it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I totally agree yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, you know what it you're doing. This is me like, off. This, it actually like, really bothers me. I mean, Robert Plant. Robert Plant has made a comment that he's like, oh yeah, he's made. He's like, oh yeah, there's uh, there's, there's, there's some new new ba bands out there that sound like Led Zeppelin. And he's like, you know, it's it's interesting. So all, anyway. all of them probably to a, yeah. to a degree. But, well, um, all of them, but that band. Yeah, the, so that's the thing, right? Like, so that takes for me at least, in my opinion, it takes it a little bit too too far. But you know, that's not what you guys are doing. So well, it's the, thing, the thing I like to say. Yeah. Uh, the thing I like to say to, to sum up what you're saying is we want to be familiar enough to bring you in the door and unique enough to keep you there. Cause yeah, if oh, that's a great way to put it, because if you're for too familiar, then you stop by and you're like, Oh yeah, this is familiar. I love it. And then two songs later, you're like, I get it. And you leave. <laughs> yeah. Like, yep. If you're too unique, you walk by the door and you're like, fuck that. And you keep walking. You know? you keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you need so you, doesn't mean good. So yeah, no, I think, I think that's right. right. It doesn't always mean good. No, you're right. It, it's, and it's interesting because like, obviously every new band is going to, you're going to hear influences that they've used to form their music. Right. So, sure. and, and you can't avoid that. That's just the way it is. But the real, a lot of times I feel like when I'm listening to music, you, you kind of dissect like, okay, I can hear the influence, but you can totally hear how you're using that influence in a completely different way and making it your own thing because you're, right. it's not a rip off. It's just, you're, you know, you can hear it in your fingers and you're playing, but then it's like, okay, he's just doing his own thing, but he's like, um, yeah, you can, yeah. you can hear where you kind of like where, yeah. where your roots right. were grown from. You another, know? Can, another yeah. kind of uh, in the weeds example of that is, is the very opening riff to Mr. Danger. It has kind of an ACDC vibe, but it's alternating time signatures of six, four and four, four, every other bar. So it's like, I, I need somebody please show me the ACDC song that has odd meters. Cause I haven't found it yet. Maybe there is some, cause I don't know their catalog. Uh, no, man, there's not. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. And as far as harmonies and stuff, it's with ACDC, it's kind of more, they have some, but I think they'll maybe be more classified as like gang vocals. I or would ours. call them gang vocals all day. We yeah. came, we came from that journey tribute band. So there's a, there's a heavy influence of like nice vocal harmonies where we awesome. all five of us things. So we, we recorded those harmonies standing around one microphone oh, as a group. And, when well, we so were five of you on the harmony, wasn't even there. So it's all of us except the lead singer. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. That cool. now that shit is impressive. Let me just and say all the um all the specific backing vocals you hear, um, like uh Sucker Punch is a great example in the chorus. That's yep. just me. That's just me. That's, that's my such a great song, dude. That is yeah, that's I love a killer that song. song. Cool. Yeah. Man. So, so did so you so you mentioned that you wrote all the songs, or is it a collaborative process, or are these songs uh, you brought yeah. to this band before the band started? Did you write these? No, songs they were all down? they were all written for this band. Okay, um, they, they generally start. It's definitely a collaborative process. After I kind of bring the yeah, the, the idea the that can um, usually what happens is you know we record all our own stuff. We're, we do all of our own production. So 
we have our own studios and stuff. So I'll, I'll have an idea. And instead of like sending someone a voice note, I'll just sit down and record the full song. So there's a full three minute demo with guitars, solo, bass, drums. I play everything in there and then I'll send it to the guys. So they really get an idea of like, this is what's in my head. And then most of the time we're like, okay, cool. Let's move forward with that. Let's, let's write some words. Let's do this. And then we kind of move forward like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, sometimes someone else will send me a riff or a voice note and I'll take that riff or voice note and go into pro tools and do, you know, add everything to it and make it a full song out of that or something. We did that with, with one of the new ones. So there's, um, there's all kinds of ways we do it, but it always starts with a seed. We never just get in a room and like, write. We've, we've tried a couple of okay. times and it's just super counterproductive. Nothing. Well, you done. mentioned that too. You said a lot of, sometimes you're just driving around and like things, like ideas come to your head. Is, is that the, the kind of creator that you are? Like you, you, you're almost like doing something else and like something just comes to you. Kind of. I'm I'm pretty deliberate when it's time to write lyrics and vocal melodies. So with these demos that I've made or that we've made, depending on what stage of the process we're in, I'll drive around and listen to those. So that's the music I'm listening to. I'll just put the Sucker Punch demo, which I believe was called Low Life, High Life before it was called Sucker Punch. And uh, I'll just put that on repeat and just play it, you know, 200 times throughout the day and just singing, uh -huh, sing this, sing this, sing this. Oh, I have this chorus I remember from a long time ago. The chords sucked, but the melody was cool. And it goes, fireball and I, you know. Okay, well, let's try that. Oh, that works really well. And then I had the, you know, the fast kind of, and I'll just do that. La, 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe one or two words or something. And then it kind of starts slowly. Okay, I know what I want to. Starts to I come to together. Puzzle now. I have these melody notes I have to fill. Let's fill them with words now. Okay, that's not going to work. You know, we just kind of go through and do that. And then sometimes there's, you know, further revisions to be made. But most of the time, at least on Dirty Damn Tricks, it was pretty much done after that. So we nice. would, um, and then once we had the skeleton, we since we the way we do it is we can then record at any order we want so like because okay. there's guitars bass and drums there so whoever's recording i just mute their thing and they play to everything else and we just keep stacking everything until it's all done and when we get in the studio together that's when a lot of creativity happens as well especially me and driz because we'll have like skeleton guitar parts but then it's time to like okay let's get a lead here let's spend 20 minutes you know what do you think about this oh, that sucks let's try this okay i'm gonna go back and forth and come up with a lot of cool creative stuff that way Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's amazing. So it's There's actually, a lot of really subtle uh, lead guitars in our, in our music. So we, generally we, what we do is I'll do most of the rhythms and the solos yeah, yeah. and Drizzle do most of the leads. So people tend to think leads are solos. I, I draw a different differentiation there. Cause a lot of the, um, if you check out the tab, but we were talking about it before yeah. the tab or the, or just the ultimate guitar tabs or whatever you'll yeah, see. Mention the, go the ahead and mention that. Cause that's a, that's a, that's a, yeah, cool you mentioned thing. it before we started recording, but why don't you just tell us about what yeah, you did sure. there? Um, yeah. If you scroll to the very bottom of our, our web store, which is just lamaybe.com slash store, there's the uh, guitar transcription. So I've, I wrote them myself for me and Driz. So I had to go back that's and learn awesome. all of Driz's parts <laughs> to, to write that. And, um, and every solo, like I promise it's note for note. So <laughs> wow. uh, I'm going like to try, try one of these solos yeah. and I'll get back to you and be like, really, is this really what you play? This is, this is I can't play it. It's impossible. <laughs> yeah. Try it out. Yeah. I, I would love to see, I would love to see some videos. If we've seen a few people do it and it, it's really always. Oh, really that cool must be see. a trip to see that. It's like, I wrote, I wrote yeah. that solo, man. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So if you have ultimate or uh, not ultimate guitar, guitar pro, the guitar software, pro. Yep. Yep. I, I, I teach, so I live and die by that software, but so okay. I wrote it all in. If you go to ultimate guitar.com and you have that software, you can get them all for free. Uh, but if you also want to support us, it's 25 bucks on the website and you get the PDFs if you do that. So if you don't have guitar cool. pro, that's how you're going to have to do it. But okay. So we're going to have Matt do this and then we're going to, film oh, it wait where the, you are, li you are watching it, <laughs> listening to it and then critiquing it. Hold yeah. on. And then I'm gonna... not, look, I, can, I can play a little bit, but I can't play like that. Um, that will be, that'll be, uh, be super fun. I, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe you'll, maybe you'll you tell see, me uh, one of your, one of your more accessible s solos and you tell me one of those and then maybe I can try it out uh, the mr danger <laughs> yeah, he does marry had a little lamb mr. A little you think mr danger i should be able to handle okay all right um yeah the mr danger one isn't too hard <laughs> okay uh, all right, all sweet, right. The sweet one's pretty slow and melodic as well oh, okay. oh sure kind of the same way yeah okay yeah but then but then there's some where you're just ripping and i'm like ah, oh. <laughs> which um, i love but she, there's some she's reckless is pretty tough yeah um, and the yeah. sucker punch take me away there's there's not a ton of fast stuff, but there might be a little fast moment or something. Yeah. There. Yeah. But, but okay. So that's awesome. That's a great sh shout out. We, we, everybody definitely go and check that out. Um, that that's, that that's amazing that you actually took the time to do that. And it's, yeah, we thought that was cool. important because we, we had been asked a couple of times before and I was like, I'm just going to do it. It took forever. But like, oh, I can sure. imagine. Yeah, how long did that take you? Jeez, that must've been like, probably, I mean, probably a, countless hours, a couple of weeks of a few hours, you know, every, every other day I'd sit down for maybe four or five hours, knock out a song or something. The, yeah, the, sure. 
hard part wasn't figuring out what to play because I knew all that. It was the it was the like typing it in. Oh, the rhythm's right. not right. Like okay, you know, I've only ever played this to a click. I've never had to figure out if it's a dotted quarter versus you know. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, especially with the solos. Like the riffs weren't hard, but the solos it was kind of like okay. I'm definitely taking a leaf from Slash's book a few times where I just go completely off the grid. There's no, I'm not in the same time at all. I'm just kind of playing around with it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that's not really, in, yeah. really hard to write down. That's really yeah. hard. To write down. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, I can You imagine. get a bunch of like 64th note ties and like weird stuff. It's just kind of like, this doesn't work. Like, like sitting down and learning Slash solos, like you think you might have it. And then you're like, well, wait a minute. Like for me, like I said, like I, it's only so fast I can play. So I'll get to some solos. And I'm just like, yeah, that's going to take me a long time to get there. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just it, like, um, yeah, yeah. So we have kind of uh, the five of us in the band. We have a Guns N' Roses tribute show we put on for time to time when that's the need awesome. arrives. Yeah, sure. And, yeah. Um, and it was super fun uh, sitting down and learning all those. We learned like 20 something songs. Oh, that's awesome. I'm learning all of them. And I always kind of knew them, but learning them like to the to that degree now that I did a few years ago was like, uh, it just made me such such a better player. I learned so I'm many cool sure. things just digging in. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's amazing. So 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 um so you said you're 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 teaching. Do you and you have the tabs? Do you ever like have your students come to you and be like, "Can you teach me what you, this song that you wrote?" <laughs> uh, no, my kids my kids are pretty young or um or just kind of like out of out of tune with what I'm doing. I think oh, I don't, okay, all right. I don't tend to overshare or anything like that. So okay, all right, all right. Yeah, you're no, like, oh maybe, yeah, look at this. Yeah. One of my students was a big fan of ours, and then um. He oh, would cool. kind of ask for he would kind of ask for riffs, and I'd show him a riff, and he'd be like, "Yes, that's too hard. I don't want to do that." <laughs> yeah, he's like, "Just read something easy." Jeez, man, yeah, go go yeah, back exactly. to um, go back to back in black or something. Um, yeah, sure. that's very cool. So, so, so you're so still Dallas. Doing... We're yeah, no, go oh, ahead, Dave. go ahead, Matt. No, I was going to ask. I want to know a little bit more about your background here and what what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mentioned that you know, leading up to this band, you know, you mentioned that you kind of played, it started as a journey tribute band. Were you just kind of doing the cover thing or were you doing other original things? I mean, uh, yeah. I've always, I've always yeah. kind of, I've definitely always been an original player. I've never okay. been a player. So I, I only started learning covers when I moved up here to kind of play with guys that were playing covers. Sure. Yeah. And, um, and then, yeah. So, but then when it was time for this, it's like, yeah, original music is definitely where, where my heart's at. I definitely feel like I have, you know, plenty to say in that in that arena so yeah i mean you I like, to, you I like to get that do. out there it's really really cool to see it kind of hit with people because we always thought it would but then everybody always thinks it would you know so yeah it's like, you always think your songs are gonna yeah but that's and great to hear other people's response to it is kind of like okay maybe we are onto something here you know so and then we win the kiss cruise and then see the see the response from our uk tour in may and then they wanted us back so fast so we're going back in december and it's like seeing all this stuff is like like okay we have something that's connecting so now that's we just great. have to that's keep great up. That's really great. So, yeah, you de so you on the pod, we, yeah, we on the podcast too. We we are uh, big gear gearheads, and um, mm -hmm. we always like to talk about gear. So, uh, can we uh, tell us about your rig? What do you? What do you? I mean, we yeah, already kind of started have, um, to talk about it a little. Tell, bit, tell right? about your main guitars that you like to use. The number one yep. guitar. What is it? <laughs> or uh, yeah, you guys, you guys need to have you guys need to have Driz on for for gear. He'll talk your ear off. Is he you. is he is he oh, the yeah. gearhead in the band? Oh yeah, he yeah. he makes all my tones. Yeah, we'd for love him. to have him on. Oh, he yeah. does. He does on 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 the quad. Okay. Yeah, he's the right. he's the master of the quad. Um, yeah. I don't have the patience for it. I, I like to uh, play more than tweak, and uh, yeah, he's, he's just the tweaker guy. He loves he loves to do that stuff. So. Uh, it works out when I have the guitar in my hand and he's sitting down there tweaking all the knobs and yeah. good good things tend to happen when he's behind the knobs. But um, nice. yeah, so we're running two neural quad cortexes, neural DSP. It's kind of like the newest version of like the Kemper or the Axe FX for those unfamiliar. Yep. We, we, uh, we know all about it, but yeah, we know, for those yeah. of you yeah. don't know, it's an incredible. Really cool. We it's bought incredible. it. Uh, we bought it like right after they announced it, got it like three months later or something because they were all back ordered. Yeah. Um, we loved it. Yeah. We didn't want to bring amps on the road or anything like that. We didn't want to deal with any of that headache. Uh, and then we're playing overseas and stuff. It's like, what are you going to do then? So we, we figured like quad fits in our backpack. So we just have a backpack and a guitar when we roll up. And, That's amazing. Um, we played a gig the other day with uh, a couple months now, I guess, but with Faster Pussycat and LA Guns. Oh, cool. And they, had oh, sweet. Their, they had all their amps behind, you know, the big double stacks and stuff. And um, we had our little quads playing. We, their amps weren't even on during our set, I don't think. And some guy comes up after and goes, man. It's so good to see young bands playing with real amps. Your amps sound incredible. <laughs> <laughs> they sound so good. Yeah. And I, Driz and I just kind of nod. We looked at each other, just kind of nod. Yeah, thanks. Oh, yeah. thanks okay. so much you didn't thing. tell him. You didn't tell no, him. You no, didn't even tell him. No, I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna let him walk away with that one because 
because well, we he probably doesn't even know what a quad cortex is. You know, <laughs> that was the that was the nail in the coffin of of does it sound different live right there? Because oh, exactly, yeah. yeah, there there you go. That's <laughs> so Dallas. That what tells you, you right there. What are you guys doing for stage uh, on stage? Are you using in ears? Are you doing monitors? How, how are you getting your sounds? Um, it changes from venue to venue. Yeah, okay. usually um, we have we have a full in ears rig if we need it. Um, okay, I usually just prefer to to not have them, but uh, yeah, it really depends on the venue and the show and stuff. Are you using like when, if you're using without in ears? Are you using like a like a power amp or something? Or are you no, just using monitors? No. Okay, no, they just pump it through a wedge or side fills. Or okay, whatever. and you're comfortable with that sound with the quad through like a wedge. Never, that's that never any issues. That's yeah, awesome. Okay, great. I mean, the quad cortex is incredible. I haven't played the the quad cortex, but I have a bunch of the neural DSP plugins that yeah, I they're use. great. Yeah, good stuff. Wow, the Soldano one, the Cali mm-hmm. Suite. Oh man, yeah. I just. I just love them so much. They sound incredible. Actually, Amazing the uh, intro to this podcast I recorded on the on the uh, on the Soldano um, quad yeah, cortex because yeah, with, with awesome. when you're doing the recording, you know, I yeah, I'd love to get this stuff mic'd up and everything, but you know, it's never going to sound. I'm not an expert, so it's never going to sound like it does in the room. So you you you, know, you get this quad cortex, you get this um, you know, these plugins, and they just sound great, and you know, yeah. you don't have to mix them down all that much. Exactly, right out know, of the box, right out familiar. of the box. They sound so. That's what yeah. you guys are doing live with the quad. That's unbelievable. Live, yeah, we're using the quad, and we're not using uh, we're using very little stock stuff in the quad. We Driz has captured all of our stuff that we use in the studio, so we're we're using a variety of amp, heads, pretty big variety of amp heads in the studio. And, um, but we don't use cabs. We use, um, I have a UAD Oxbox. He has a torpedo capture X or whatever. Yeah. The capture X. Yeah. Captor yeah, X. Yeah. Yeah. yeah capture yeah. X. And I have, the, I have the ox, the really big one. Yeah. The by, ox is great. Yep, yeah. Versal audio. Yeah. So we use those and run into those. So we're doing virtual cabs, but real amps. And uh, that's amps. how we've recorded everything so far that you've heard. Okay. So, and, um, so talk about, more. so talk about the uh, amps you had mentioned you're doing the slash. The slash AFD yeah. 100. I have, I own, I don't own that many amps. I have a Marshall AFD 100 and a Fender Supersonic. Oh. Driz has a bunch of amps. He has a, um, some sort of Fender twin or something tweed or whatever. Okay. And it's all, they all like the names of them are all so similar. I, yeah. I, I, like, <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> Dude, you gotta, I, you I, gotta I, dive I, deep into the Fender amp hole. I did because I got a Princeton not that long ago. So yeah. I like, and I was going to buy an old one or like a vintage one. It's all it's like started. super duper deluxe. And then yeah, a number. I don't know. Deluxe. Yeah, yeah. Deluxe super. Delu- as opposed yeah. to what? Like, yeah. <laughs> Like what? Like what's the not like stand? Like stand? I don't know. Anyway, the he's twin. Got one of yeah, it's crazy. And it's, I don't know, dude. Literally, all of it, it could be any of the ones you just said. Like I've no yeah, idea. yeah, yeah. Okay, so you got a bunch <laughs> of the fender ramps. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. he has one. I just don't couldn't tell you which one it oh, is. Okay. All right. He's got a, um, a Mesa Boogie Fillmore, which is really cool. Fillmore Fifty. Those are great. Yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, I almost what, bought one of those. So the Dirty Damn Tricks was that fender, uh, but the new stuff he's doing on this Marshall little Marshall head he found, uh, I can't remember which model it is, dude. I'm so bad with gear. Like I just, I, I like, <laughs> I tune out so fast. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. It's like no, somebody no. starts talking about tubes. My eyes just gloss over. I just like, just let me play. Like, I don't yeah, care. Oh, does go, it sound geez, good? Does yeah. it feel good? Like, <laughs> yeah, it sounds good and feels good. But I do want to ask, how do you, how did you arrive at the quad cortex? Because the Kemper always has this, also has this capture. Yeah, I, I had, I had, I've yeah. owned all of them. I've owned okay. Helix. I have a Kemper and I, I got a Kemper in 2014. Okay. Like right after they came out and I've had it forever. And it's still now, since I use the quad live, I used to use the Kemper live. Um, the Kemper just lives in my studio now. So I don't have, because okay. it's a rack and it was kind of a pain to like figure out what to do with it live. Oh, okay. So, all right. Yeah. So it just stays in my, my studio now and the quad kind of goes with me to gigs, but I actually don't use the quad in the studio really at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and then. Yeah, I did start using it for um, the solos on the new album because it just feels so good. It's like it's the same exact amp. It's literally the same exact amp captured. So my specific AFD one hundred yeah. yeah. into the quad, and I I kind of did an AB. I recorded the solo with the AFD and recorded the solo with the quad, and I like the quad one better. So I left that in there. And um, the the AFD one hundred, it's a real bitey amp. You can really yes. hear the click on the strings, and the Quad for whatever reason kind of smooths that out, makes it a little more buttery, and I think that's great for the solos. For the rhythm, I need that big chunky. Yeah, biting sure. It. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're talking about you compared the capture of the AFD on the quad yeah. to the actual yeah. AFD, yeah. and you like the capture a little bit better because that's smooth. Wow, it's really for the for the solos specifically for for the solos it's, it's, only. It's perfect yeah. for the other stuff too, but I just wanted yeah. that. Re- that's real unbelievable! Amp. Wow, that's you very just like cool. the way it sounded better. So yeah. tell so you guys so you guys are releasing a new single and I'm assuming a new album coming out soon. Can you talk about that? 
Yeah, uh, sure. Down to Fight, the new single is coming out November 1st. Uh, when we're recording this, it's October 13th. So I don't know when it comes out, but November 1st, 2022, Down to Fight will be out. Awesome. And uh, yeah, I had a funny exchange today with someone on the Facebook page. All I wrote when I posted it was 11 um, 11 01 22. And somebody commented, 22 question mark and i was just like okay all right here we go and then i realized <laughs> then i realized it was probably someone from overseas from the uk yeah oh right and so then i started thinking okay well that date's passed so you're yeah. still what <laughs> why yeah, would yeah, you post right saying? why would i post it in the past just, or... just, yeah i just let you know we released this 11 months ago right but, yeah. <laughs> not, that's not great marketing um, but yeah, we're, we're super excited to get that out there. It's, uh, the song's been mixed for a little while. We are excited to, um, get it out there. I, I just finished that artwork today and we got it up there. So cool. Oh, man. sweet. Yeah. We're looking forward to hearing it. That's very sad. So talk about, you know, how do you guys do your kind of touring? Are you guys working with an, a, a booking agent? Are you booking it on your own? How, how do you deal with this kind of, you know, the, what I like to say is the business end here of running yeah, a band. Um, well, that's kind of a <laughs> up in the air for us right now. Yeah. Okay. We, we, We've worked with people in the past that didn't do what they were said, you know, just all yeah, kinds of it's tough. Stuff. Yeah. And most of the time, like it was, we pulled off that last UK tour by the skin of our teeth. Like we really? had a book agent and they ended up pretty much getting in the way to the point that we thought we were going to have to cancel it. And, um, oh, wow. and, and you know, if you, you guys don't know me very well, but that's not, that's shit's not going to happen when I'm in charge. So like, <laughs> we're getting that shit done. If it's the last fucking thing we do. Sure. So we, we ended up pulling it off and um, thank God we did. Cause it really blew open the doors to the UK for us. And we made a lot of fans and a lot of friends and we're going back now again. So that's awesome. Yeah. We're, we're, we're very independent with all that stuff. Um, that's great. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty much just us that, that actually ends up getting stuff done. So we've kind of just decided to go that route for now. And you've you've had, had, you're, you're going back in December, you're going back into the UK in December. Did you yeah, say? most of December will be there. Yeah, and you and okay. you guys kind of share the burden of this work, or is it like a couple of you? I mean, how does it go? Um, d- depends on the work. I'm I'm kind of in charge of the band, so yeah. a lot yeah. of it ends up kind of coming down to me. But definitely, yeah. everybody steps up and and helps and has you know their own things that they excel at. So that's great. But but at the but at the end of the day, you know, it's kind of it's kind of on on me to make sure the the ship goes where it needs to go. So okay, so, so you kind of take thing. it. Which I think is a great way to do it, because in the end, someone's got to be responsible. Yeah, too for many, it. too many yeah. cooks, you know. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's just like you know, there's so much stuff that has to get done. It's 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 pretty insane. Oh, I can imagine, like well, booking a tour. I, I can only imagine how crazy. Oh, it's so it much. It's so much more than that too, because yeah. we have, <laughs> we are independent in every possible way. You can okay, think of. all right. Like, for example, um, the logo I designed, all the posters we make, the website I upkeep and built. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the every item of merch we made ourselves with artwork we made all the album art i made every um wow. you know, all the songs we write we record all the songs we you know we do all the stuff we do uh hire a mixed master engineer to help us kind of take it to the finish line yeah, but other that, than that, that's yeah, yeah other than that it's all but, us start to finish but, top to bottom so but good for you yeah. on that good good for you for that because that and that's just the day and age we are with music right now right there's so many more opportunities for bands to do pretty much everything on their own and they don't have to answer to anybody they can do their own thing do it the way they want to and 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 great that's that's i that's feel like the, that's the way it should be yeah. that's the big thing i don't want i don't want to sit in a boardroom and have someone tell me like well skulls aren't polling well with preteens so that's like that's right yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is the, this is the shirt we're gonna do so i don't care that's <laughs> right you know so yeah yeah this is what we're doing this is this is what yeah. we feel in our hearts and that's what we feel is yep. right no i think that's yep. and i think that's what it is these days we've seen this we've talked to enough artists where you know you can go extremely far being independent i mean look at joe bonamassa he's like the the crown example of this, I feel like it's like, or like uh, Chance the Rapper won a Grammy and he's yeah, him. Chance the Rapper yep. completely Chance independent, rap, yep. you know. Yep. And you think about this, it's like this is quite possible these days. Um, you know, I think it, I, I think it's, you know, I, I give you a lot of credit for taking it on yourself because I think at some point it gets really difficult, right? When you're doing the recording and you're you're doing everything, like you said, artwork, like you have to think about every little detail. And eventually you yep. might get to this point where you're like, I can't think about every detail. I got to write my next album or, you know. Yep. And um, that's and why I, we're kind of, that's why we're kind of in, in this, in this right now where it's kind of like we're working on writing the new album. But if I want to sit down to write something, I look at my task list and I see like, I got to book 11 yeah. bells for, for the, for the UK tour. And I have to find out 
which one's going to be economical and how far is it from the venue and how are we going to get there? And is there room for the driver and is there room for the parking and who's going to, you know, like, You're gonna who's going to drive yeah. us? Like, we yeah. have to book the driver. We have to pay this deposit. We have to get the flights. We have to do this. It's like, and it's just like, the list is so long. It just goes and you're on also and on. like, okay, I still have to teach my students and pay my bills and, you know, yeah, yeah man, you're doing out, it. Out, you know, whatever. So yeah, it's like, it's uh, it's quite a lot, but thank God for like lists and calendars and stuff. <laughs> dude you're doing it it's kind of unbelievable you're doing it. yeah you're and, that, it work. and i feel like that's what it is right but i think it's awesome because it used to be that artists had this thing like bands had this thing where it's like if i don't get signed then my life is over right like it's all about being signed and all this bs right and that's just those days are so long gone i would say those were gone even even before the whole internet age to some extent where you could get out there and do a grassroots thing but it, but that was tough if, if we're honest it was tough without the internet and now, you know, you can get out there and do it, which is great. So. Yeah. Well, with the with the gross incompetence out there, the thought of me putting my career in someone else's hands is just not going to happen. <laughs> I love it, man. I think it's so true. Yeah. It's like if you want something done right, you got to be your own advocate. Yeah. Well, no one's no one's going to yeah. believe in your art as much as you are. And, and they shouldn't. Like, why would they? They got their own stuff going on. So yeah, like, totally. You know, yeah. No, like, I don't trying expect to... anyone else to. So. Everybody's trying to get by. It's just it's yeah. what it is. But can you talk, talk, talk a little bit about the U.K.? And what it's like over there, because we, we've talked about, we've talked to a few, um, I guess like artists and bands where they just say like, it's a different vibe and they love rock music and they just like, they just like eat it up in a different way that they do here yeah. in the US. It so. was it was cool. The thing that stuck out to me um, more than anything, I think, is that over there when, when somebody said like, um, oh, we're going to come see you tomorrow, sure as hell they showed up. Like, oh, okay. In, it, in America, no, oh, they are dedicated. They are dedicated rock fans over hey, there. Hey, man, I know. I've, I've played in bands a long time. I know how it is. It's like all your friends say they're going to go, and maybe half of them Dude, show up. You'll have you'll have someone be like, "I swear on my mother's grave, I will be there tomorrow. You will see me, and you never see him again." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't even like to go see Matt's band. You know, I, I know I can barely get Dave out. Jeez, <laughs> yeah. man. But uh, like, anyway. I'll at least tell you, like, no, I'm not going. I can't go. You know. But yeah, like, yeah. like they, we had everyone, everyone over there that said like, I'm coming or I, they, they came and we saw them again and they were like, I told you I'd come, I'm here, you know? And, um, it was, great. that was pretty cool to see. So yeah, it was great, man. They just, uh, it was just such a cool place. They came out we were most blown away just how many people we had come see to come see us, you know, a band that, that had never been over there that yeah, a new band, a young band. We don't have label support. We don't have label money. We don't have yeah. investors or, or rich daddies or anything like it's, it's all us trying to make this happen. Now, do you totally find the done. fans over there, like, do you feed, is the energy completely different? Because we've talked to, like Matt said, we've talked to a number of artists that have toured the UK a lot or the Europe a lot in, in general. And it's, um, the, they say like the, the energy is just totally different for a show and, and you feed, obviously you're going to feed off that as a musician. Yeah. Is it, is it, I don't, very know. Different? I don't know. Um, I don't know that it was, that it was so different. Um, I think that might be kind of a, a fun thing to say, but I don't know that I could accurately say that it's so different to perform to a crowd of, of them versus us. Uh, mm -hmm. It was just nice to have crowds where over here, it's like, it's hard to get people to come out. That was yeah, the big difference. Yeah, yeah, hard yeah. to get people to come out to see your original music. That's just doesn't yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. Unless you're so like over here in America, you, you have to be famous to get famous. Like, it's kind of like, how's that work? Like, yeah, no, I right. think no, that's, that's a good that point. an amazing point. Actually, I'm not I going to see, I'm not going to see your local band until you're selling out the local stadium. And it's like, well, by like, how did we get to that point? Like, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, so, so I wanted to go there, Dallas, because I wanted to ask you, because one of the things we've talked about, I mean, you, you probably know, I mean, you play, you played with a guy in the band, Boston, um, like in Boston, it used to be this original music scene. Right. And we have these legendary clubs and they're they're slowly all closing down where local original bands could go and play. That stuff is kind of gone in Boston. Now, now it's all like the bigger venues. Down. They're gone. They're yeah. completely well, gone. The Middle East now was the iconic uh, club in, 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 and it's gone. In, in the Boston area and they have announced yep. that they're going to close. So so I think but I think part of that is people just like you said the audience isn't there anymore for this, at least locally. I mean, the audience is there for music. There's more like I guess like touring act acts coming through, I think than we've ever had, but it, there isn't this like homegrown thing. So how did you guys do it? Like, how did you, how did you go and build this up? Was it more of an internet thing? Was it, was it like a homegrown thing or how, how did you approach it? Um, well, I definitely don't think we've done anything, but, uh, <laughs> to, but any, any bit of growth we have had has, has, it seemed to me has come just straight from the strength of the album. Okay. People would, 
people over there, somebody, um, uh, there's a Facebook group, the new wave of classic rock run by Jeremy Wills. Good guy. He, they're, they're all over in the UK. The, the people awesome. that run that page are all in the UK and they work really hard to push these bands. And it was a small page when it started. And now it's like 30,000 people or something. Oh, wow. so okay. It's like wow. a big, a big page for this kind of music. We got to check these guys out, Dave. These, we want to have to get these guys on. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Great, great guys. And Jeremy, <laughs> yeah. the owner of that page really loves the LA maybe. Okay. So he, um, and he just happened to find the album. I don't know how I'd have to ask him someday. And, um, and he started telling his UK friends. So it was just like that with the internet, you know, somebody okay. over there finds it and then it just starts spreading because people are sharing it with their friends. But one of those people that found it was an agent over there who run a, ran a festival and he really okay. liked it. Okay. So he, he messaged our Facebook page and was like, Hey, I have this festival. I'd love you guys to play. And we were like, okay, play the UK. Like, I don't know how, I don't know what, I don't know how any of this works, but yes, we'll do it. And so, um, we figured that out. We brought it back to our agency. They promised us they'd get us this big UK tour. In short, every date they booked pretty much was canceled. And wow. we had to go over there and do like almost no date. I think we went over there and did wow. like six dates or something. Still broke even, which was pretty incredible. Oh, awesome. Wow. So, you, so you, like you said, you had some good crowds. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. We moved wow. We moved a lot of merch. So we did, uh, we tried to figure out, this is pretty funny. We tried to figure out how we could get our merch over there. So we ended up just checking two bags that were just nothing but t-shirts and CD. Oh, great. <laughs> and drum suits. Just big bags, just stuffed with every shirt we could fit in there. And then we would just sell them out of the suitcase at the gigs and um, and ended up moving a, a, a good amount of product that way. So so we talk about really this a lot. Way. We talk about this a lot on the pod where we say, you know, these bands, yes, they're going out there and touring. But if you go see a band, especially, a, you know, a smaller band, you know, buy the merch because it really goes a long way. Right? Yeah. Like you said, like, that's what kind of got you through this tour, it sounds like. Right. Yeah, it makes yeah. Uh, it really does make a big difference. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, do right. the other 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 are, are the venues taking a percentage, a big percentage over there of, of your merch sales? Because I know it differs you, depending where you go. But typically, you only run into that at like bigger venues. Like if you're yeah. playing okay. like, um, you know, Fenway Park. Like, yeah, they're going to take cut your merch because you're going to sell a hundred grand of merch. Yeah, tons of they, merch. Yeah, they want their piece of it. So, um, uh, one of my friends who was in a bigger band who would run into that, he said the way they got away from that over there is they would rent like a merch truck and just park it out front outside oh. of the venue. Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting okay so then they didn't have to pay anyone that's great and good for yeah, them that's hey that's there you good. go beat the system i'm sure they yeah, love good. that but you know screw them you know <laughs> you ways to get around it for sure yeah you got to get around it but that oh, okay so that that that's great but yeah so the merch thing is great like we love to buy merch like every everywhere we go we're like i gotta get a t-shirt we gotta support these guys yeah i see you wearing the dirty honey shirt yeah yeah I, you you recognize the dirty yeah. honey I don't, so even, dirty. I don't even see the logo and i know what shirt that is you oh you know it okay yeah we yeah. are we're big dirty honey fans oh we love dirty honey we call dirty honey the official band of the guitar dads podcast <laughs> that's awesome yeah so the only th uh, not the only thing i know but the funny yeah. thing about dirty honey is every time i try to type their name i accidentally type dirty honey <laughs> Dirty yeah. Heine. That's so, so that's good, fun. man. So, um, yep. you know, along those lines of Dirty Honey and you guys, I mean, you had mentioned you kind of, you check out some bands. Well, one of the things we do like to talk about is shout out bands. We like to ask our guests about other bands. I mean, obviously we've talked about your band. Your band's awesome. Are there other yeah. bands you think people should be checking out? Yeah, like, we have a whole um, pod, we have a whole podcast. We started. I know you guys have your own. You do. Why don't you yes, shout out, you don't you shout yeah. out that too? Talk because you guys have your own podcast too. So. Yeah, it's called yeah. Your New Favorite Band. It's way better than this podcast. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no you guys probably, are awesome it, it probably uh, no no is. no we, no probably <laughs> is better than this podcast you guys, as we you said we we strive to put up mediocre content oh, thanks. you know well that's what we do we we make up for the content what we, what we don't have in content we make up for in backgrounds make, so for, right. make up for an led lights yeah that's right leds that's right yeah. we we, we pride ourselves some... on leds yeah so. Dallas, let yeah. me tell you, we've had more comp more compliments about our backgrounds than we have about the actual podcast. So you're, you're <laughs> no, absolutely that's, right. That's uh, that's good. And by the way, I listened to the clip uh, you guys posted where you talked about us. So that was really flattering. So thank you for that. Oh no, we love it. Well, like we said, we love to we love to track down these bands, and you and you guys just like hit hit us over the head. We're like, oh my god, oh man, I, I was heard about this. I, yeah, yeah. It, I was blown away the minute. I, that's what I said. I had to send it to Matt, and Matt was like, like he told you, like that's ah, AC. I'm like, no, 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 no. Just give it. Give it a second. And so well, then, so then in dad fashion, I mowed my lawn, which takes me a good amount of time. 
I put it on and it was great. You know, I'm playing air guitar on the rake, you know, I mean. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> With your uh, grass stained New Balances. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> that's the white New, white new Balances. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's what we do here. That's right. You got it. Yeah, that's right. right. Well, our, our podcast is called Your New Favorite Band. So, it's yep. you know, we want to be your new favorite band, but it's also a way for us to highlight a bunch of other new bands that we meet along the way and that yeah. we love. Uh, the top three for me are definitely um, the Electric Alley from Cadiz, Spain. They're really okay, good. Okay, Alley. Okay, play yep. with them in Spain, and um, just an incredible band. Really, really good guys too. We just we love those guys, and we hit it off, uh, you know, with them really good, and then just had such a fun time. Um, if you guys don't know the New Roses, you should. They're from. Oh, we I love the New Roses. I've been trying to get. I've been trying, trying to get, get them on. on. I've been trying to get Timmy on here for a long time, and and, and his then the management or whoever I'm communicating with. Which we, it's like it's it's just a bunch of phone tag. So Timmy's uh, we'll get Timmy's, Timmy's hard to get a hold of. He's usually running like ultra marathons and stuff. He's been over here in the states a few times. They're from Wiesbaden, Germany. They are, he's, yeah. Yep. He's been over here a few times, uh, running in, in like the Grand Canyon and crazy shit like that. He's he's oh, really really, really cool. and uh, we hit it off with those guys. We played with them in the UK and we're playing with them again in December. So it'll be fun to kind of reunite with them. Uh, and the other one will be Them Dirty Roses from Alabama. We're we're good friends with those guys as well. And and okay, yeah, yeah. Those three. Um, those three bands I I genuinely like. There's a lot of bands coming out that it's kind of like, okay, you know, we're brothers in arms and and we're in this together. But like, I'm not really listening to music that much. You know, it's, it's yeah. good, but but I'm busy with other stuff. But but these three guys, like, I, we put on their tunes, all of us in the band, and we okay, we'll crank it and uh, and just jam out like we're just big fans. Like, not even you know anything, else, especially the New Roses. We just love those guys. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the Dave, New Roses. Dave discovered and, and, them. They're great. Yeah. Yeah, and and I and uh, uh, you know and, and the reason we had you on is because we're now like huge fans of you guys. So you guys, yeah, are well, that's all, awesome, like, man. I appreciate right. that. How did you How did you guys find us? Yeah, Dave, how did you find the LA? Maybe I just have my magic little, you know, uh, you know, I find my I, I I have my ways, you know. No, I I I, I tend to I have. He just I, googled I do, greatest band of all time. <laughs> I found. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that's exactly what I googled. I he said just, greatest just, band yeah. of all time. No, I. I do, I do Google stuff. Sometimes I'll say like, you know, bands I should be listening to or new bands or whatever, but a lot of it, sometimes it just comes through, you know, the, the algorithm through Apple or YouTube, Spotify, that kind of stuff. Um, and I think I stumbled upon you guys through either Apple or Spotify and just like a, you know, playlist was going. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, who, who are these guys? I'm like, wow. And I heard the guitar playing. I'm like, good. I gotta, I gotta check these guys out. Yeah. yeah we, so we, that, we find a lot that's of that's exactly. Like that. That's exactly what I was saying is it's this, the strength of the album, which uh, for whatever reason it connects, which we're glad because we like it. We wrote what we like, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. Um, oh, it's, it's a killer really album. Cool, really cool to see it connect. So that's, that's really nice. But, yeah, um, man. It definitely connected with us for sure. And sounds yeah, like you're connecting we, with a lot of people. So you definitely, and we are so looking forward right. to the new music. We can't wait to, to, to see what you guys are going to do in the future. Yeah, yeah man. Are you yeah, we have the, um, a pretty insane music video shoot coming up for this new song where we're going to try to destroy some shit. So awesome. So well, look, that's, look that's... so, so we, we asked you that question before we wrap up, talk about your guitars. Like what's your main guitar? I know you're a Les Paul guy. Yeah. Yeah. Gibson <laughs> Les Pauls. I have, I have three um, that I use for the band. Yeah. I have a gold top uh, that doesn't, it doesn't leave my studio too much, but it gets used on the, on the album. Okay. The main two I use live are, um, uh, it's just a Les Paul standard. We call it tiger. It has a okay. nice tiger. It looks like the Appetite for Destruction guitar. Everybody thinks it's a Slash signature, but no, can't okay. afford that. One. Okay, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, um, it, it looks a lot like that, but it's yeah. We we call it Tiger because it's just got such a thick maple, you know, quilted. Yeah, I think I saw that one, and I did question whether it was a Slash signature. Yeah, that one's in the uh, yeah. that one's in the O Sugar video. You can see the Gold Top in the Sucker Punch video. Yeah, um, Mr. Danger, I believe I used tiger and i also used a mockingbird i have which is kind of like a gold it's like a goldish it looked kind of like tiger it looks the same it's like kind of that yellowish gold with a nice tiger maple top oh nice okay that, that one actually might be quilted but um yeah that mockingbird's a beast it's a big old heavy guitar and then mm -hmm. i have the newest the newest edition which will be in the new video which if you've seen pictures you've probably seen it we call it we call it sticker it's just we sticker bombed the les paul studio oh, and okay. redid, redid everything about it um clear coded over the stickers redid all the electronics redid all the gear the hardware every bit of that thing has been touched up and um you should go check out a picture of that guitar if you haven't seen it because it's it's oh, a it definitely will yeah that sounds awesome and what is there's, what there's is, no other guitar like it on the on the planet for that's sure. very that sounds incredible what is driz play 
Um, he's been, he plays a lot of PRSs and Eastman's. He okay. Eastman's. Yeah. I know him. Yeah. 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 PRSs. I know got PRS right here. Cause if you're a dad, you got to own a PRS. That's a, that's like, yeah, a, right. It's like, that's, yeah, it's well, Driz is a dad. So there you go. Oh, he is. Okay. Yeah. You're a, you, you, I thought it was, if you're a lawyer or a doctor, you got to own a PRS. Well, that too. If you're a dental <laughs> practitioner, you <laughs> need to have dentist, a PRS, yeah. but, yeah. um, you got to have a PRS. I think I did see, see Driz. Did, is he in any of your stuff with the PRS? I might have seen him with the PRS. Uh, probably all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Probably all of it with the PRS. The I saw he you guys. Has, uh, I don't know the PRS models. So I couldn't tell you. He definitely okay. could. Yeah, He's yeah, got I'm a blue sure. one, a white one, and a um, <laughs> a like really cool like wooden one that looks just like Angus Young's SG, but oh, it, cool. it's like that kind of thing with a black pick guard and that kind of wooden, oh, like deep cool. rosewood colored wood. Oh, and cool. uh, yeah, I just I don't know any of the model. They're all SE and then some long ass number. I have no idea. Yeah, all these all these numbers. No one knows what's going yeah. on with these. Oh, we call so, the. Uh, I just remembered this. We call the sticker guitar. We call it the More Paul. <laughs> more Paul. <laughs> that's not awesome. a less Paul. I love that. It's not a less Paul. It's a more Paul. Yeah, that's awesome. And what what's the, is, is like the band stickers all over it, or just other bunch of other stickers? Um, no, you just gotta go take a look. Okay, we, we okay. Yeah, we'll we'll look at everybody, everybody go, go look back, at this. Uh, Go back, back in our Instagram. Our go Instagram. back to it's the Instas. Yeah. Okay, go back yeah. on the Insta and check this out, and you'll see the guitar. That's incredibly cool. I saw you put. You guys did like a playthrough thing. I think was on. Was it on YouTube? Yep. We shot that songs? the same day we did the Sucker Punch video, so it's in the same, literally the same room. Okay, awesome. Um, yeah, we did it for Mr. Danger, and thank Mr. you for Danger. bringing that up. We are about to do a bunch more of content like that. We're gonna. Go I through love that stuff. By the way, every song we have, we're gonna do. Um, I don't know how we're gonna do it yet. We haven't figured out how we're gonna format. It's not going to be a pure performance playthrough. It's going to be kind of like a lesson where I break down different parts of it. Okay. We're going to do that with, with all the songs we have for the most part. So, cause we've been told by a bunch of people like you're a guitar band. So it's like, okay, well let's kind of steer into that and show people guitar stuff. So, cause yeah, we love yeah. it. Yeah. The, the other thing I wanted to want to ask you is, you know, it's, was it always clear to you that you needed to be a two guitar band that the LA maybe had to be a two guitar band? Was that just, was it, or did you ever, you know, contemplate, being a one guitar band or were you just yeah, like no definitely yeah. yeah yeah definitely contemplated being a one guitar band because we just couldn't find the right guy to fill that spot yeah okay and then we found Riz and he fits the spot so perfectly in, in literally every way and and you know perhaps most importantly like personality wise so his because because for me for me to have the right guy on guitar on the other side of the stage our personalities have to be really really totally. meshed you know? yeah and he he yeah. definitely has that so it's it's so nice to be able to to have that and and rely on each other. And we have you guys haven't seen us live, but we have some really special moments in our show where we do some dual guitar parts and oh harmony, nice, I so love we pick that. solos together and all kinds of crazy stuff that we guitar throw harmony, in guitar harmony as I call exactly, it. Exactly, man. We we throw that stuff in any anytime we give a little wink to like the guitarist at the back with his arms crossed, like we we try to do that. For sure. <laughs> we would so we would be all so over when, that. Yeah. yeah. When can we see you guys? When can we expect you guys to come to the Northeast? <laughs> Not this year. This year's pretty much spoken for. Um, yeah. But next year, you know, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't. It's touring's tough right now, so we'll see. Yeah. We'll figure it out. We're gonna. We're gonna. Never big enough for P, enough people to show up that it makes financial sense. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. No, of course. Right. Yeah. But we, we would love to see you when you come. Well, up we'll here. do what we can to you know to get people to come out if you ever do come up around this area. Yeah, man. So, yeah, that would be amazing. I mean, you guys awesome. are right, right in the thick of it. So. Yeah, we just love it. Um. So so why don't you take the time shout out everything everything LA maybe where, where can I where can everybody find you online yeah, and all that well, stuff best place to keep up with us is just LA maybe.com so that's kind of the hub that'll lead you uh to any of the places you might want to go all the socials and everything there Very okay cool. great and you do have the podcast cool, which is called podcast your new favorite band your yeah new favorite every, band so yeah, check so that check out that you that podcast out. fans yeah. um yep. if you're listening to this you're probably a podcast fan so so go check that out as well. Awesome. Yeah. And go awesome, check man. these guys out, guys. We've talked about them before, as you know, um, and and we, you will definitely, I will guarantee you, if you you've, if you put these guys on just for a little bit, you are going to be an automatic fan. So go check them out. The LA Maybe. And They're to your UK it, fans, it. you said you have a lot of UK listeners. We have some UK fans. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. head over to lamaybe.com slash UK tour. And uh, you can get all your tickets there for that tour. So that'll be really fun. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, go and check if, them out. And if you come, and if you're listening right now and you come to a show, tell me you heard me on Guitar Dad. <laughs> I would, I would, yeah. That would that would yeah. be unbelievable if that actually yeah. happened. I'll give you a free um, pick or something. I don't oh, know. there you go. You got a pick out of the deal. Yeah, but, but then buy a shirt. Don't be cheap. Buy a shirt. Don't yeah. be cheap. <laughs> Support well, the band anywhere you can. They bought a ticket. That's a start. Well, so. that's, that's true. Nice. We're not going to not going to berate them. Yeah, for buy coming, a ticket for buy coming a to a show. You know, 
Like, you guys get some cool merch, so go buy a yeah, shirt. The merch is some, cool. Yeah. I mean, come on. Um, yeah. Cool, man. Hey, uh, when we when we get off here, make sure since you guys can't get to a show, make sure you send me your um, address. I'll send you a shirt or something. Oh, we oh, will sweet. appreciate Thanks, that, man. man. Appreciate that. Awesome. Amen. Well, Dallas, look, we really appreciate your coming on. Um, you know, we wish you guys all the success in the world. We think you're doing it right and you're killing it. So keep at it. Keep writing those incredible songs, writing those riffs. And, um, you know, hopefully it keeps going for you guys. Hey, yeah, man. Hope so. Yeah. Matt, Dave, thank you so much. All appreciate right, it. Man. Yeah, thanks right. for coming on. Um, right. and so, again, check out the LA Maybe. And um, I think for that, this week, that was, uh, that was it for this week's Guitar Dads podcast. That's it. Keep rock alive. We'll catch you on the flip. <laughs>